I used the Dobsonian this past weekend to get some video of the moon in its waxing gibbous phase and I wanted to see first of all what I could do with it with virtual dub which I used in a previous video and also a new program that I got, well it's not new, most astronomers who do any kind of photography know about it, it's called Registax and so what I want to show here is the, uh, the video that I took first and then the photo that came out of processing the video in Registax. The .avi files that come out of the camera aren't readable by Registax, so I have to run them through virtual dub and uncompress them, after which uh, then I can use them in Registax. So here's the image that came out of Registax. One thing I will note is that it's upside down and reversed left and right from how you usually see the moon. So let's take a quick look at the way we usually see the moon. Okay, but I'm going to go back to the original picture to do the, the labeling here, as this is the view you would get through a telescope. First is the crater Tycho, which is really prominent on the, the top part of the upside-down, left-right switched telescope view. And you can see the rays coming off of it and that extend over a good portion of the visible surface of the moon. Next is the crater Copernicus, so both of these named after 16th century astronomers who made significant contributions to our, our understanding of the heavens. And the last place I want to point out is the first place where human beings walked on another body in the solar system, which is the Sea of Tranquility, or Mare Tranquillitatis. There are a bunch of other seas, a bunch of other craters, many other features that you can check out here. Uh, so, but I just wanted to get you started with a few of them so that when you look at the moon you can have some idea of uh, what it is you're looking at. One element of this photography that I hadn't mentioned before was that I had a pair of crossed polarizers on the end of the eyepiece. And so with these you can adjust how much light uh, gets from the moon into the camera. If there's, if there's too much light, the element in the camera can't adjust to it very well. And if there's too little light, then you don't really get a good image. So this kind of lets you play around a little bit before you start taking movies to see exactly how much light to let in. So this was a gift as part of a, a set of filters that my fiancé got me for my birthday a couple years ago. Very grateful for that, because it definitely comes in handy for things like this.